Thank you, Jesus, for another day. We have re received another day from the Lord. God wills we live tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so far, we have... Um, We have been um, dealing with the prophecy for 2024 and uh, we've uh, covered quite a distance with this uh, word that the Lord gave me in these... Uh, troubled times we live, but we can be assured uh, that the Lord is a merciful God. And uh, he'll always open the door for those with a uh, broken heart and a contrite spirit who fear and tremble at his word. So, recently, uh, we finished off in peace. It was part nine. And we're moving into part 10 today. Um, Peter last week and how the Lord um, opens, no one closes, closes and no one opens. Jesus uh, the Lord Jesus wants everyone to be in his house and he wants to turn it around for us. That was in Isaiah 61, 1 to 3, beauty for ashes, all joy for mourning, spirit of praise for the uh, garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Today, we're going to go into um, safety and security. The Lord, the Lord um, wants to provide security and safety or salvation for the people of the world this year. That's what he wants. And the offer's going out. Um, the God of salvation. So we're going to start in Psalm 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You know my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Safety and security. Hey. Eh? Punchline being, uh, you are with me. He's the only one. 
kill me, kill me with a twenty-five eight. A lot of, uh, a lot of insecure people in the world today. And uh, I believe only few saved. Only few have that divine safety. People today walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Full of fear. The valley of the shadow of death. The world. Um, the shadow of what's coming. And death has come upon the earth. As of Eden, that's why you see, you see things last for a while, then they die. And uh, it wasn't like that in Eden. There was no death in Eden. Only the death of a, a relationship. between Adam and Eve and God. So, the valley of the shadow of death, from what I can understand. In a, in a, um, uh, what would you say? in the big picture, in, in, in a way that um, covers life, not just some area, as, as has been translated and said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, or oh, some little valley somewhere. No. The Lord uh, always covers all the ground, not a section. He's speaking to all nations. Wanting to save whosoever. And so, safety and security with what's going on in the world right now. Very few, few people have that. They're, they're wanting them. They're longing for them. And uh, the United Nations are forever pushing for them. We don't have to wait around for the United Nations. We can go to the Lord. We'll have that for ourselves. And the whole, the whole mentality will, will change once you go through the door. We go to the Lord. Call on the name of Jesus. Everything changes. Hey? I will fear no evil. And nestled in between. I will fear no evil and your rod and staff that comfort me is you are with me. the word of God. And the Holy Ghost. 
how we get that comfort, security, and safety, salvation. That's how we're born again. We're born of the rod and the staff. Born of living water. Born of his spirit. We can't possibly be people that fear as we live in this world, walk through this world, when we have Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Right? As we subject our lives to Christ. the Word and the Holy Ghost. Well, he's known as the Comforter. Right? He's known as the Comforter. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Singular here for David, speaking for himself, though I walk. At the end of the day, whether you're married or with a group of people, you, you have a number of friends. Or at the end of the day, we only walk our own walk. A lot of the times people, whether they're friends, family, they don't know that you're insecure and uh, a lot of times people think they're so safe. We have to we have to settle that, as the Lord said, you sought out your own salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord. Hey, right? we got to sort that out. Now, if we got to sort it out, how can it be once saved, always saved? The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. It's safety and security personified, isn't it? The way you put it here, uh, though I walk through the valley, the shadow death. I like that word walk because it, it, we walk everywhere, don't we? We walk everywhere. Even if you, you got to walk to the car, walk to your motorcycle or transport, or you walk in to the shop and you walk down to the park or you walk to go fishing or you walk here. We were always walking. Right? And he's always with us if we're with him. I'll fear no evil for you are with me. the rod and the staff. No comfort for the unsaved, is there? 
as the world says, there's no rest for the wicked. But there's rest for the people of the Lord. Because they're bearing the yoke of Messiah. The yoke is easy and the burden is light. Come to me. That would be great. 2024. To see more. Come to the good Lord. And he is the good Lord and he is the good shepherd. And he is good. And he is great. The great I am. The I am he. Uh, the I am Jesus the way, the truth and the life so today part 10 2024 the year of the door safety and security we might want to create our own But then again, you still live in fear. You, you can you, you can bar up your house and lock everything up. You can um, do everything you possibly can to, to make yourself secure, secure and safe. But deep within, you're still not. Right. It's only with the Lord that we find true safety and security. As we lean, as we lean on the everlasting arms, not the arms, the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, what fellowship. Oh, what joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. I'm leaning, leaning. Safe and secure from all alarm. Leaning on the everlasting arms. But the large majority of most people don't believe it. So they go about things their own way. His way is not our way. That's for sure. Contrary, usually. Well, most of the time, if not all the time. <laughs> and so... The good Lord He wants us to head out this year twenty twenty four wants us to head out make it uh, very simple and plain clear to the people. They can have, uh, they can have the blessings behind the door. No, not a course, a three month, nine month course on how to do this or that, but just Go through the door, come to Jesus. 
they're going to have uh, a choice. They can choose the change. Have that fresh beginning. Let them know opportunities knocking. Choose the wide road or the narrow road. Right? Joy and peace. Extreme joy and peace. And um, safety and security. There's so much to be had. So much to be had on the other side of the door. Once we come to Jesus. I'm going to go over to Matthew for just for a minute. Matthew. Matthew 28. 20. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That was Jesus speaking to the disciples. Lo, I am with thee. Always, even to the end. That's a promise of the Lord. Are we going to be with him to the end? Eh? Are we going to be faithful? I am with thee always. One of the greatest security, safety nets humanity has. But the world would say, well, there are only words. And how can we trust, how can we believe that Jesus said that. <laughs> and prove it to me. No. You don't have to prove Jesus to anyone. Hey? There wouldn't be faith, would it? All we have to do is preach the gospel. We don't, we don't have to prove anything because we know it is. We know uh, the gospel is. The message of Jesus is. It's not a maybe, could be, I don't know, I think so. It is. He is. The gospel is. Father is, Holy Ghost is, Jesus is. We read that in Hebrews, don't we? 11.6. Once again, I'm just going to go there for a minute. In Hebrews, Hebrews 11. But without faith it is impossible to please God. Or should say to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is. And that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. See? I don't believe that he is. Nothing complicated. 
not complexities is that you just kind of believe that he is. And then you live a life accordingly. Okay? In sync with his script. And everything we've said thus far about the door in 24 comes down to that, doesn't it? He is. And safety and security are just another two rewards on the other side of the door. On the receiving side of the door. Right? On the receiving side of the door. Glory to the Lamb. Yeah. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. cuts to the chase doesn't he doesn't the Lord cut to the chase on every aspect of life right and uh, I mean many would prefer an army <laughs> they prefer a wild and woolly army to be with them but anyone with any wisdom would choose Jesus to be with Jesus. Uh, the Lord Jesus continues, continually tells us that he has all the authority heaven and earth. And so, uh, be a wise decision for the people this year. And we might have an unsafe person listening, we don't know. I know I don't know. There might be many unsafe people listening. There might be people on the border in the valley of decision. I don't know. I can only speak what the Lord puts in my heart because I am no orator. Right? I am myself in him. That's what he wants. Everyone to be themselves in him. And when you're in him, in as bold as a lion. Because you have safety and security. And you have all those other things. Joy and speak of peace of the past understanding of the mind and change you have uh, have the Lord's uh, support protection so 2024 I mean even to this very day. Um, people in uh, Australia, they're struggling terribly. First world country. To this very day. And things are looking at 
things that look at getting any better soon. They'd be wise to turn to Jesus. And same with the backsliders. Turn back to Jesus. Psalm 23, 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I like that. Because it tells me that he's present. Oh, he can't be present with everyone. Yes, he is. He's omniscient. All knowing. He's omnipresent. All present. And omnipotent. Omnipotent. All powerful. That's enough for me. It's just a childlike characteristic I have been given. I can't claim any glory. Oh, well, that's just me. I'm just so great. No, it's a childlike thing. I just believe. Unless you become as a child. You cannot enter. Unless you become... Uh, Easy to convince. They should become uh, like a child believing anything and everything they're told, especially by Jesus. You cannot enter the kingdom. Right? If you humble yourself and be like a child, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That's a beautiful thing. When we think of an adversary, someone attacking us, or verbally abusing us, we don't have to panic. We don't have to um, stress because we're told he's in the presence, he's in the midst, and he's doing prep, he's prepping, he's doing preparations there. Right? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He's present in the presence of your enemies. Hi. Dear idea. We can't have that f from anyone every minute of the day, only Jesus. Hey? Only the omni, omnipresent one. The world, the wealthy, rock stars, world leaders, they all have bodyguards, don't they? The Pope. Churched people like Benny Hinn and Joyce Meyer, the Maori clay ministers. Jerry Savelle and Jesse Suplantis, I mean Duplantis. All these so-called faith giants, they call them faith giants. The fathers of the faith. Great faith men. I mean, what a sham. 
How can you call yourself a great faith man when you're peddling, peddling books with such dribble in there? They're selling books and they've got bodyguards and they're called the great faith man. It, it's, it's absurd. It's pathetic. For people to believe that they are faith men, I reckon they've been handed over to the liar, the devil. No one in their right mind could believe it. that's faith. Hey? Eh? Selling books and bodyguards. Lying through their teeth. Well, they don't believe he is. Because if they did, they wouldn't sell the book. They'd give the book. You say, well, they've got to cover the cost. If the Lord called them to write the book, he'll cover the cost. Because it's his ministry they're supposed to be operating in. That's why I called my ministry, Jesus the Christ Ministries, mission, it's his ministry, and I'm on a mission for him, and that is the word. We're all about the word, because everything hinges on the word, Jesus. It all hinges on him. It all hinges on the word. That's just scripture upon scripture upon scripture. Talking about the word and salvation, the connection there is. Hey? But the churches, the one world church, persists to be defiant. And so now you say, by grace alone. Well, I'm not going to go there at the moment because it's it's obvious and evident, isn't it? What the Lord says goes. It's obvious. And what some mere man or woman who's afraid to die, that's why they've got bodyguards, they're afraid. But Jesus says, fear not, for I am with thee, says the Lord. Right? <laughs> I called you by name, child you are mine. They sing the song. All these Pentecostals sing these songs, but yet they're surrounded by bodyguards. Hey? Forever talking about faith, forever peddling and selling the word. Well, they say it's the word. Oh, God, give me a new book. And God said this, and God said that, and then God said, and God said, you know? And God didn't say. They said, in their own imagination. Because <laughs> if God said, they'd have that boldness of a lion to have the book printed by faith and tell the printer, look, it's okay. It'll, it'll be paid for. Don't get bothered. Only last Saturday, my wife and I and Brother Osar and his wife, we went for a ride on the motorcycles, ended up over in the Gabba. And uh, blow me down, knocked me over with a feather. We're sitting 
at a cafe just next to, virtually next to, the old printer, the bloke that used to print my literature for years. I'm going back 25 years. And he used to do a good job, full colour and gloss, full gloss, full colour. And uh, here I am right now saying, you put the article in and the money will come. Hey, there's no selling. Well, I, I used to give him a... Uh, give him a draft of what I wanted done and then he'd knock it up every time. The money would come. I'd have the money. And you know what? He actually had faith in me that it would. Because <laughs> I told him, I said, the Lord will provide. And he'd have a smile on his face. He said, OK, Paul, no problem. And everything was always sorted. Year after year after year after year after year after year. Hey? Faith. Not fake. Faith. Believing the Lord. That he is. I had that safety and security in him, still do. I feel at home in him. I feel at home in my skin and I feel at home in him. Elohim, our great Lord and Saviour. You are with me. You are with me. My cup always runneth over. In other words, there's always a spillage. There's always a little bit extra. That he provides for someone else that I'm to pass it on to. Eh? Not that I will start boasting now. Start blabbing what I do. That my congregation don't know about. Start boasting about what I give and who I give to. We don't want to lose rewards. <laughs> By faith, by faith. I always see it's cutthroat. Cutthroat faith. It's on the wire, real faith. In the Christ is on the wire. It, it is uh, thrilling. I love it. Love walking as a stranger and a pilgrim in this earth. Not wanting to be known, not wanting to be accepted, not wanting to be someone in the eyes of sinful society. Hey? 2024, the year of the door. A real door of strength in them. As we enter through. You know, when you enter through uh, at the airport and you go through the the checkpoints and you hear this din, din, or they have 
different noises sometimes. And when you walk through the Dalit, when you walk through the door, you, you, you like have this... It's like a... Um, it's like a beautiful empowerment when you come to Jesus. It goes through your whole being. <laughs> I, I say being because I don't want to say body because it's spirit, soul and body. And mind, will and emotions just go straight through you. It was so overwhelmingly powerful when I first came to the Lord the Aboriginal brother, and I asked the Lord to forgive me of my sin. In that moment, I spoke with other tongues, and I did not know what was going on. And the power was I was speechless. It was all. I don't have words for it really to pinpoint and describe it. It was just uh, otherworldly. Otherworldly. It was then I realised the Lord was on my case and he wanted to be my case manager. <laughs> Of course, I said, you got the job. <laughs> to manage my life for me, because I couldn't. No sinner can manage their own life. We're just not up to it. <laughs> We're just not up to it. We just don't have the goods. We have a lot of baggage. But we don't have the goods. Case manager, provider, minder. He's all this. It, it, it just never ends. Never ends. As I said last night, he's infinite. We're breaking into the infinite. Right? Star Trek and... Spock and all these science fiction, you know, Thunderbirds or whatever, that's cheap jet. That's nothing of man's creation, invention, will, will ever scratch the sides of the the capabilities of, of the Christ. Nothing. Sometimes when I start talking about Jesus, I feel like I'm going to explode. <laughs> it's sort of like welling up. It's, it's like this great river, like a dam ready to burst and just splinter concrete everywhere. Right? I always think of the barrage, the barrage in my hometown, in Rockhampton, central Queensland. Where they People used to go catch barramundi and mud crabs, Fitzroy River, dirty old Fitzroy. But look, out of the eater comes something to eat. Something good come out of the, uh, the dirty old Fitzroy. Big fat barramundi and big fat mud crabs in the muddy old Fitzroy. And so a lot of catfish there too. If you like catfish soup, 
that, you know, I think of the Varad holding back the water, you know, and then that release the gates now and then, and bang, and the Barra, that's where these black fellas, they used to uh, wait on the other side there, and the Barra just come flooding down, they'd lay hold of these things, you know. <laughs> the old black fella knows how to catch the fish, without a line too. But, and they used to trade them for a flag and a wine. That's a cheap barra. I mean, these are big fellas, big barra. They're deadly, eh? You know? They'd be three footers. Yeah, so bursting. Ready to burst, ready to release the gates. <sighs> Welling up. Welling up. Within. Such an awesome God. And so, uh, to this day, I've, um, by the grace of God, managed to hang on to them. The beautiful witness of the power, joy and peace, safety, security of the Lord because we know the devil goes about like a roaring lion but he's not he's a gummy cat Jesus knocked his teeth out long ago at the train hypothetically knocked his teeth out he's a gummy cat no lion. There's only one lion. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus. But he goes about like, you know, that, that very careful way. That a lion, when he's praying on his, um, target on his lunch very quietly that's how the devil goes about quietly <laughs> seeking whom he may devour he comes not but to steal, kill and destroy he wants to rob he, he tried time and time again to rob me of my calling, rob me of my joy and peace use people to do it These people to try and convince me, ah, you're, you're on a wild goose chase, mate. You need to forget about that Bible, it's garbage. Hey? Even church leaders, he devil used them to tell me no one's listening to me. No one's listening to me. You need to join a religious organisation. <laughs> hey? You need to join us. No, sorry. And you'll have the biggest home group in Brisbane if you join us. So, mate, listen. I, I wasn't called to a home group. I was called to the world. And the Lord's confirmed it. The last 36 years, whether it's Spain, England, Africa, Vegas, New York, Right? Given my handwritten teachings to the Prime Minister, ministering to one of the greatest radio announcers ever in Australia, John Laws, 
putting my literature in the hands of Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> hey? Home group. Give it a break. Some mouldy, mushy home group. Where you, you step out of line and speak the truth, you're finished. No, thank you. Cheesy. I always see those home groups that are cheesy. When I was growing up in the lawn, cheesy home groups. I'd only drop by to see what was going on. It was sham. Everyone having a throw. No such thing. There's a teacher or there's not. Jesus never had home groups. Jesus taught. He didn't do Bible study, he taught. He didn't have a Bible study where everyone had a throw because of the proud and arrogant can't be told. No, he was a teacher. And people don't like teachers. <laughs> Especially if they think the teacher is less than them. When all along they're not. They don't like it. That's why they use the word share. It's always sunny and share. In that, these days in the churches, because they're wicked, arrogant, pig-headed, proud people. Oh, you've got to share. Don't say you come here to preach. Oh, they won't like that. <laughs> They'll probably attack you. You don't say, I'm here to preach. I'm here to teach. Oh, don't say that. They reckon that's pride. No. No. I don't see that word share used by Jesus and the apostles as a as a common word in their vocabulary. I don't see that. As a regular word. It says they preached and they taught and they warned. And people don't like that. So, no, Paul Sheen wasn't called a home group. Oh dear. That's just the way it is. I'm sorry if I disappointed you. But, um, no, the world is my oyster, as they say. Go into the world. That's what the Lord said to me. And it's been that way for 36 years. My website, millions of views. YouTube, 379 subscribers. I'm not even asking them to subscribe. 2.2 thousand followers on Facebook. No boost, all organic. Not asking them to anyone, not friending anyone. That's the part of the miracle. I don't friend anyone. It's not because they don't like them. I hate people or anything. That's just the way the Lord has it. He says, you don't do the friending thing and I'll show you my hand. There's no this friending and trying to get people to follow. No. The Lord just said, put the message up, put it on YouTube, put it on. And that was all done for me. YouTube, website, all set up. Facebook, two Facebook, Instagram. I'm not a tech giant. It's all just done. It's sorted. The Lord just said, well, you just do the preaching and the teaching and that stuff I'll give you. It'd be very simple. And so it's uh, just continued on to this very moment. 
and will continue until the day the Lord says that's it. Huh? Time to come home. <laughs> so, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The moment they arrive. Huh? The moment they arrive. The moment my enemy arrives, the Lord's prepping, the Lord's in the midst, I'm good. I, I'm secure. I, I'm, I'm safe. Like when I was set on fire by that Muslim in 2002, I was good. If I felt threatened, I would have smacked him in the mouth. <laughs> I didn't feel threatened, I felt blessed. But I would have smacked him one. He showed me his strength by pushing me, trying to push me through the pane glass window. And the window was bowing, that's how close we got. And that's when the woman in the hardware store come out and she said, you better stop that, the man's going to go through the window. The window's bowing, it's nearly ready to break. I felt his strength, he didn't have much. So if I was feeling insecure or afraid, I would have smacked him on, tried to escape, get into the flesh. But I didn't, I didn't feel insecure. No. I felt quite safe. I felt bold as a lion. I just kept preaching. And that's it, he didn't like that. So he went down to the tobacco shop and got the largest bottle of lighter fluid I've ever seen. You know anything about lighter fluid? It's highly inflammable. It just about explodes when you light it with a match. It's different to petrol. Petrol is explosive, but it's different to lighter fluid. And poured it on me and lit the match. And I did. I was still preaching as he was pouring it on me. I just thought, whatever he's doing, let it be. I'm not going to resist this evil man. <laughs> and 16 years later, he come back begging for forgiveness. I said, no, it's okay, bro. I've already forgiven you. Right? I've already forgiven you. I still got the text that I, I well, a photo of the, of him. I got the photo of his apology off the website. Off, off, off my Facebook. But anyway, safe and secure from all alarm. Like Meshach, Shadrach, and the big Negro. I mean, the Pendigo. They knew they were in the Lord's hands. They had trusted the Lord so much that. When they were said, uh, when it was said to them, "What are you going to do if, if your God doesn't help you?" And they said, "So be it." Well, they were willing. They said, "Well, basically, they were saying we're we're prepared to die in His name, but we will not worship you. <laughs> we will, will not worship your gods." Eh? We, we will not betray our wonderful God who we trust in. Eh? They weren't crying and uh, trying to make a deal with the king. 
it wasn't like that at all. It wasn't. Right. So, uh, yeah. And so, um, that's the same with myself. The Lord was good enough to die on a cross for me. At a terrible crucifixion. Hey? Terrible crucifixion. And um, why should I uh, not suffer? Hey? For his name's sake. There's no problem there. Okay. I'm just digging around here while I'm talking. Um, and uh, yeah. I had a scripture in mind, um, can't put my finger on it. Okay. I just can't put my finger on it. Yeah. So, um, Just bear with me. How the Lord, um, yeah. How the Lord, uh, leave it. How the Lord makes a way. Sometimes it looks like betrayal, you know, oh, the Lord's left me. Um, but no, we always must keep that mindset of safety and security in, in Him. And He'll show you the miraculous end, like He did with Paul the Apostle. My grace is sufficient. In other words, His power his strength in us. That's quite explosive, isn't it? His power. Hey? We don't need the power. He's got the power. We have the will. Mm -hmm. His strength. That's what Samson had, didn't he? had the Lord's strength. When Samson, when Samson had a job to do, man alive. They're bringing down pillars. You know how big those pillars were in the temple? <laughs> you talk about, you talk about strong men. Boy, they're girl gods today. Compared to Samson, Ordinary looking, ordinary looking man. But the power of God came on him. Look out. Right? He, he, he slain him with the jawbone of a donkey. Just hammering, just taking him out. How exciting, right? how powerful, yeah, but he showed a bit of weakness there too, even though he's a, he was a strong man, right? the devil knows uh, 
how to steal, kill and rob. That's for sure. So, um, yeah, you prepare a table before me in the in the presence of my enemies. Not my head with oil. My cup runs over. And you'll perceive that anointing too. Whenever people come to attack me or uh, aggravate me or challenge me, uh, I always perceive the Holy Ghost. I always perceive the presence on me. You anoint my head with oil. He's in the he's in the midst. Holy Ghost is moving, and your cup's running over. You won't get any more safety and security than that. Jesus in the midst. Holy Ghost, power of the Holy Ghost on you. even though he's just in you, and your cup's running over. Right? You might share the overflow with the enemy. <laughs> That's what the table's about. You say to the enemy, come on, sit down, and have a coffee. Carry it on like a pork chop. Sit down, and we'll have a, a good old chin wag. Let the world pass by for a moment. <laughs> eh? Have a Lamington. Behave yourself. Well, we could very well go on with part 11 of safety and security next week. Father willing. Eh? It's a shame I didn't lay hold of that scripture. I'm trying to... I was trying to... Um, Dig around there and um, would have been nice to add that in. Yeah. Would have been nice. Would have put a nice finish on it, you know? Uh, have one last peek. Uh, And I'll go over there. Yeah. So if we go over to, um, say, where is it? Daniel. Let's go to Daniel 3. Daniel 3. And we'll start reading it, and we'll finish here. We'll start reading. Um, Daniel 3.12 There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods, or worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. So they brought them, these men, before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods? or worship the gold image which I have set up. Now if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre and psalmetry, psalmetry, in symphony with all kinds of music, 
and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, <laughs> our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Daniel 3, 18. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Well, 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 well. And there you have it. You talk about safety and security. These boys were emboldened. I mean, they waxed bold. They were as bold as lions. To say that to the face of the king. <laughs> oh dear. And we know what happened after that, don't we? Of course we do. So, my best wish is go out to all listeners today. I'm going to... Have a lovely day. I know that because Jesus is with me. Even to the end of the age. And so I hope everyone has a wonderful day. And that uh, your fishing for men and women is... Uh, prosperous and I hope your day um, brings glory to our wonderful saviour Jesus and benefits the kingdom because then it will benefit you right? as it says in Matthew 10 32 and 33 so God bless in the name of Jesus I speak Amen. Thank you, Lord.